Well, thank you. Hey, Woo! everybody. <laughs> Welcome to tonight's episode of Homeward here at the Nero Asylum, at our Twitch or the YouTube if you're watching this in the future. Uh, and well, let's just, let's just jump right in. Um, last where we... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Always. Um, so last we left off our main characters, our crew of the Drell arc, um, were seen about, fin um, you know, doing the more important repairs of the ship, uh, mainly the drift engine that requires some uh, new crystals to ensure that it is more it is stable uh, while traversing through the rift. And with some of the more or less functioning scanners, the crew managed to find a planet in a system that may have this kind of crystals. Uh, somewhat a tundra planet with the poles being more uh, of the colder areas. And after a quick drift jump right into the planet, um, and realizing that maybe they can't just jump into the shuttle and require a bit of more equipment, uh, our heroes went on, grabbed some stuff that they might have required, and um, we are starting this session as we see um, our characters with more warmer clothes than they usually wear, um, S carrying a large backpack, like... <laughs> I like, mean, it's it's more. It's not like super large. It's, it's the for hiking. It's, yeah, it's the hiking backpacks. Yeah, um, we just see slightly that. larger. <laughs> Clearly, you've never seen my hiking backpack. I put everything in there. <laughs> put, put a second person in there. <laughs> Easily <laughs> can fit a second person in there. Um, it's Johnny's and, backpack and... off of Hotel Transylvania. It's got sunglasses <laughs> on the back of it. Exactly. Honestly, yeah. S is a DJ secretly. We just don't know it. Secret cat. I, I, I need to make notes. Hold on a moment. <laughs> Trust um, me, I'm... I'm, I'm the same. But yeah, um, you guys uh, begin to funnel into these, um, this shuttle. Um which uh, you've been informed that is called Wanderer 2. Wanderer 1 being the other shuttle, it's not in the best state to fly, so they, they procure you this one. And uh, inside, there's, there's enough space uh, that you could um, occupy there. Like some people like bring, let's just say, like 10 more people in and, and fill up with various uh, cargo in it. And um, toward the front, um, there, there's three entrances to the to the shuttle. On the back, there's a ramp that leads into the cargo section, and to the side, there's some smaller doors that can be, uh, um, you, you can go in there for just individuals. And once you go in there, to the front, there is the seat of the pilot. There's the one toward the front that is where the the, the main controls are, and a seat a bit behind and above for. Uh, a co-pilot if someone w wishes to uh, sit on that. Mel but, uh, is immediately going to take a chair that is not in the pilot section because I can't <laughs> fly. I can fly. Uh, I can sit on uh, co-pilot. Okay. So the two yes. androids uh, go to the uh, cockpit and uh, begin to set up there. Um, uh, I forgot. Mac. <laughs> I was going to call you Windows. I'm like, no. No, it's, 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 that's not, that not Windows. That's, not, that's the incorrect operating system, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's the Shadow Realm version of Mac. <laughs> um, <laughs> Mac. <laughs> how um calm do you want to go on this like do you want to be careful and take a lot of your time to fly in or want to um expedite that a bit more so uh how fast do we want to get there guys don't, don't, I don't think we're in any terrible rush are we 
Yeah, but we don't have to, like, crash the ship or anything. Let's not set any records or anything. Yeah. Very helpful. Uh... <laughs> Let's just mosey. Mosey through space. Yes! I do like a good mosey. <laughs> Uh, in like that case, half turn to to K. Like, did you just say mosey for my benefit? <laughs> Yeehaw, bitch! <laughs> Sorry. Is that because of a space cowboy? <laughs> no. It's... So, um. Okay. Amos, what is <laughs> your piloting bonus? Oh goodness. But that number is just going to assume that I succeed because it's 16. It's 16. Okay. Fair. Uh, I was asking to, to know if you were going to, uh, if you would like have to roll for it to like, go fast or if you would take like take 10. So with a, taking 10, you would go a bit slower, take more of your time uh, to flying down. But it will be a very safe fly as you would have like a total of 26. And the ship lifts up and you begin to slowly make your way out of the hangar, making sure you're handling the the shuttle um, carefully through the uh, lateral corridor that takes out of the, ha the hangar and into one of the exits to the front of the ship. Not and you come crashing out. Onto every corner as we go out. <laughs> not at all. You're we very careful. Make sure not to hurt the big ship as we left. No, bang, 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 bang. <laughs> You're not leaving the mark in every wall of the hangar. Um, didn't break the trial arc as we left. I made sure yeah. not to do that. And you come out and immediately you're faced with the, the planet covering most of that horizon. And as you navigate and are receiving um, information from the trial arc or on the position, you see that you have to go more toward the northern hemisphere of the planet and it it will take you a couple of hours it will could take you some hours actually to to go there as you are making uh, your way in the emptiness of space you go a bit faster because there's nothing to hit um and for I, you I, this, I this whole places i can't hit things yeah um and for you, just being in the control, seeing that massive expanse of space and the planet ahead of you, it's somewhat relaxing. Like the nervousness you were feeling before, it's fading as you are just losing yourself in, in, into this. And for those looking through the cockpit, you can see toward the northern hemisphere to the area that you are, it looks like you're heading. Um, you see sort of, uh, like aurora borealis uh, lights coming in into the like uh, darker side of the planet being in a kind of a white area more of a circle coming around it mm. and um, that seems to be the direction you have to go toward uh, so it takes you some some hours until you get uh, into the actually I would to get to the atmosphere it will take you like or less, almost an hour. And from there, instead of getting to the point that you have to go and going directly downward, you're taking more of a, a careful, uh, oh, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? Descent. Descent. Well, uh, no, there, there's a particular descent. word. Descent. Yeah, descending to the planet. Uh, <clears throat> uh, making sure that you're not being a ball of fire that is igniting through the sky as you enter. Nice. So, that was a good I thing. don't explode the ship. Got it. And as you go in, the ship begins to shake a bit. But you activate, you with, a, with the help of us, uh, begin to activate some of the dampeners. So the right uh, into the planet is not uh, shaky. And the planet itself, in the area you're going, there's uh, like, mountain range across it there's some areas 
toward the peaks that are covered in snow and it washes over it, leading into some valleys that are more green, but definitely of the cold, um, uh, cold biomes with large, uh, somewhat thick uh, trees sparse across. Um, and eventually, as you're moving through, in the sky, you begin to see somewhat of that light that you were seeing in, even in space. And ahead of you, in some of the uh, near the more mountainous and, and hill areas, you begin to see flashes of light, even from a large, uh, uh, far away distance. And as a pilot, you begin to like more or less navigate, tilting a bit, so you're able to see from the window above you. And you see these clusters of crystals covering long distances. Like it, it's very visible that finding these crystals is like right there protruding out of the ground. So you need to go into caves, but there doesn't seem to be a landing, an area that you can land near it. You might need to uh, find a spot of. Everyone it's, else started acknowledging, so it's so nice of him to like put yeah, on a tuxedo. I love your scarf <laughs> to come. <laughs> to come just, at least he got fancy for it. It's, it's just I, I like how you were like this. The cat begins to climb, and you're just like, <laughs> just like accepting. <laughs> it's just tilting. Um, that's, that's all you can do. You, you just accept it because if I move him, he's just gonna come back. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. As a cat is, back. yeah. Very next day. <laughs> the very next minute. <laughs> and escaped. Um, but yeah, uh, probably see from the landing area that you're going around, you assume you m the closest area you can land the ship without being in a tilted area or, you know, a secure landing might be a five to ten minute walk uh, uphill both ways <laughs> through the snow <laughs> hey, Ray. is that a song no oh, it's something our parents it's say yeah it's life is so easy for you millennials when i back in my day i had to walk uphill to school both ways in the snow <laughs> yeah don't worry yes. about it hey. <laughs> You had to be there. Had Generational to be there. thing. Definitely have to be there because there's no snow over here. So yeah, we don't have any sayings related to snow. No, no like you had to, people you had in to live Florida through... would say that. Yeah. 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 It, it didn't through... matter where Three you live. Once in a lifetime recessions. It was just there. And mm -hmm. I think it actually, they did it on the Rugrats too. The grandpa and the Rugrats would say mm. stuff like that. Yeah. It's probably where it came from. Probably. But uh, five ten what, minute walk in the snow uphill both ways. <laughs> <laughs> there, the snow doesn't seem to be that thick, at least from all up here flying the ship. But it might slow it down possibly. Have we, we considered just dropping us? I've got uh frost soul uh hiker or frost hiker soles, which means that I've got like ice spikes on my shoes if I want. Oh, yak tracks. Yeah. That might I, be a Michigan oh, like, exclusive thing now that I think about it. <laughs> don't lick your butt on camera. Get. <laughs> go away. Go. Oh <laughs> Children, am I right? <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Things I never thought I'd hear tonight. Uh <laughs> well, after a little asterisk in the conversation. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> Sorry, I should have muted for that. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> um, Everybody, welcome to chaos. <laughs> good, good, good. We'll see how long that how long that lasts. Um, so yeah, you, you see that there's that area that you can land near. That's the nearest area you can land the ship. <laughs> Bits for licks. I just said to Thanks, Kikar. <laughs> 
We we appreciate your bits for licks. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna lose it. <laughs> it's it's gone. We don't even have to go crazy in chat tonight. <laughs> It's my fault. So. I'm sorry. It's actually my cat's fault, but I have sh yeah, it's him a cat's fault. shamed him away. Yeah. He'll be back in five minutes, but you know. So, uh, uh, landing the ship. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, you know, professionally and expertly, Amos lands the ship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're taking your time, so you're able to, to place it calmly. It smooth right all the way. Yep. Oh. Also, the skies were clear, and so you had no problem moving here. I can't. Quick question. Um, I know that you said we don't have to worry about like environmental exposure, but this might affect that. Can I still feel cold as a dead guy? It's <laughs> uh, a good question. It's going to affect oh. something I do if I can. I mean, if I remember, we had covered this when we went to uh, Kay's room, because Kay's personal room is, like, freezing. And yeah, yeah, it's like but... a refrigerator. Mm. I think it was just... Okay, never mind, never mind. I've got it. Ignore me. We land. We land. We're great. I... Probably you have some resistance to it, because... I'm I dead. Seen... <laughs> yeah. yeah, you would still feel it, but mm -hmm. so just rereading about the Borai, you're immune to negative energy, which is not cold, but it's just dead. Bad vibes. Uh, yeah, but uh, and game <laughs> no plus <bad> vibes. one. <laughs> you gain a plus one to saving throws against disease, exhaustion, fatigue, mind affecting effects, paralysis, poison, and sleep effects, and stunning. Like you're resi you're physically resistant to many things, so I assume cold might be. You might be like, ah, oh, I can feel this is very cold. Mm -hmm. It's not bothering me. Cool. Okay. Kind of. Awesome. Yeah. The cold that resolves never my bothered thing. him anyway. The cold never bothered me anyway. We we can't. <laughs> I'm sorry. I will <laughs> ask you guys to just that all chaos, that all that chaos, just let it go. Okay. I'm trying. <laughs> I can't help it tonight. My it's okay. It's not functioning at full capacity. You know what they say, though. We should we should head out onto the surface of the planet, and open up the ship because love is an open door. <laughs> what is happening in the Twitch chat? I don't know. Corpse fridge in the morgue. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Cool. Yep. Um, <laughs> All right, which is on our level tonight. Got it. <laughs> yep. I'd love to see it. Okay. So, you guys carrying all the equipment that you brought with you, or some of it? Uh, well, we know that we keep the emergency beacon on Wanderer too. Um, mm -hmm. I am taking my climbing kit with me, seeing that there were mountains here. Mm -hmm. um, and. Yeah, so I think that's the only like I'll I'll take everything. Like I've got my full pack backpack packed. You've got the rope on the side. There's binoculars hanging on the other side. Um Kay is just holding the mining gun and looks at herself at themselves and then looks over at S, leans over to Nelodius and says, I feel like I underprepared. <laughs> Nelodius is looking at what looks like um Gosh, what would it even look like? Like a laptop in his hand. It's got like a, a display that he's looking at. He looks at it. Oh, well, I didn't, and now I do uh, feel a bit unprepared, but uh, at least we, uh, we're, we're all, hopefully, we'll all, you know, make up for each other's. Uh, maybe, as you just, you have a, you have a, a tendency to, to, you're very, I'm just going to shut up. <laughs> and then you look at Mac, who is looking exactly the same as he did on the Dralark. Just now he has a mining pick strapped to his back. Yeah. Uh, S also has a mining pick on the backpack. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry, I just... Um, I have a need to make sure we're prepared. 
Uh, no, no, I, it's not a bad thing. Oh I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, I also have the radiation sweeper on and the uh, data pad uh, as well. Um, those are outside of the backpack in uh, easy to areas to reach for S. Mm -hmm. um, so. And I have hey. this cool thermal scanner. <laughs> That's all I brought. So. I brought this pickaxe and I've drove the ship and I've got this coat. Mm. One thing I didn't mention because it's not like, uh, it doesn't have any stats or anything, but uh, Nelodius has put like an extra beefy brace on his right leg because the cold fucks up joints and he's got a bad leg. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Um, so the, the ramp lowers down. Ah. Perhaps I should get a hydrate going. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, I might throw this with water. Water. Um, yeah, the ramp lowers down and you are greeted into this, uh, cold climate outside it's you figure probably it's not the first time in your life, but since you w woke up in the Dralar, this is the first time you step into a planet. You're not enclosed in this metal construction around you. It's somewhat freeing. The only emotion you see... Oh, wait a minute. Am I muted? No, I'm not. Okay. No, we can hear no. you. Cool, because I muted myself earlier. The only emotion you can see through K is just the antenna kind of twitch a little bit. Aww. But. That's oh, it. Love them so much. <laughs> yeah, and, and you see up and above uh, some birds flying a bit in the distance. There's, you know, you can look around and count like a dozen spread all around. Um, from the distance, they, they look doing their no normal flights. You probably yeah. mentioned this and I just did not hear. What time of day is it on the planet? Mm, as you were arriving on this area, um, because of the accommodations to just do it during day, just so you can have more visibility, you would be arriving to what would be slightly past noon of this planet. What would be like a 1, 2 p.m. of its equivalent? Okay. Cool, cool. Thank you. We need to talk about your perception of time. Sekrain. Slightly past is not two o'clock. I guess it depends on how much daylight depends. you have. Because I'm in, I'm in the part of the world where the sun sets at like 6 p.m. now. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, to me, if somebody says slightly past noon, I'm thinking like 12.30, 1 o'clock. I'm not 12, thinking... 12.31 o'clock. Very, sp very precise. Yeah, it's very specific. 12, 31. Yeah. I'm thinking like in, in that area... Mm -hmm. I don't think as far down as two o'clock as being slightly. I, I I think that is past because I I, I see like in the quarters of a clock, mm -hmm. so it like just slightly past, only like a halfway. Anyway, it's two p.m. You're two p.m. in this planet. Okay, <laughs> fine. <laughs> um, My data pet says that it's two p.m. The kind of equivalent. Um, you you still have at least uh, five to six hours of light here. I agree. Wow. What even is time? Construct, we should tear it down. Uh. As you seem to be in a really chaotic mood today, perhaps I should hold the backpack. <laughs> I'm sorry. Just I should him. have put that in the chat, sorry. <laughs> so, your planet side. Your planet side. Touching ground. A bit of snow where you landed. Mm -hmm. Some green grass and mud and dirt is it a satisfying crunch when we step on the snow uh, not so much in this part mm. so it's like fresh powder not like iced over snow that's been there for a while mm -hmm. and this in this section that you land it okay not lake effect though not lake effect not lake effect oh lake effect snow it's great <laughs> So, do we know which way we're going? Uh, we 
saw caves when we were landing the ship. Um, it did so when landing. Outside yeah. of caves that we can use. Right. We had to land the ship away, so we. I'm assuming we would know the direction where to. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you had the. Uh, you were seeing it from above, and you had the sensors from your ship, and you also had information. That it I'm was assuming being that I've from the dollar. So you have. I'm assuming that's all kind of connected to my data pad, which is why I've got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you didn't land it far, so you would know you have to make your walk northeast. Gotcha. A bit, a bit up, a bit uphill. Katie oh, is distracted by the grass and the snow, and is wiggling their toes th uh, uh, through like the different textures. Hmm. It's just absolutely fascinated by it because, as far as they know, they've never been planet side. This is this is a weird sensation because before your sensors, your, sen your sensory antenna were like up to this point I can see because the walls, and this is like all above you. It's like you can sense the expanse after that that you can't see and sense through that. But when with your eyes, your bug eyes, you can still see this. this Fascinating. We're not going to fall off the planet, right? Gravity's going to keep us, like, firmly down? I hope so. <laughs> well, considering that it's Luna never been is rotating concern. around a central source, and <laughs> we didn't notice anything. The ship of... hasn't moved since we landed. I would assume the gravitational effect. anomalies, so... <laughs> Take note of what happened if someone rolls an at one for anything. Zachary, <laughs> if we fly off this planet because we rolled an at one, I'm going to be real scared. Uh, as we are making our way in the correct direction. Making my way. <laughs> making my way up hill both <laughs> ways. <laughs> no, no. I'm, I'm the DM. I have to not be chaos. <laughs> um, no, it's just going to. <laughs> uh, Null is going to keep an eye out for any plants that are unfamiliar to him, which, with amnesia, I imagine, is most of them, but specifically if there are any conifers um, that have cones that haven't opened yet, he would like to collect some of those, but I don't want to deviate us from our path just as we are going. Um, roll me a perception check as you are guys making your way. Downtown? <laughs> Ooh, okay. Persuasion. Uh, it's a 21. Nice. Um, I'm a plus 10. <laughs> nice. I now need... I, is the one I'm thinking? Yes, it is. Okay. So you're seeing some trees. Uh, in this area that is have been going a bit more uphill, the trees are not as condensed. Um, but you're seeing them, and they're odd. Not in the sense that, you know, it would cause you alarm, but for us as humans, these ones, um, you notice that some of them, the leaves have this sort of odd silvery white uh, coloration in the center, and to the outside, it becomes more the... the uh, sometimes darker green, sometimes a clear green, and it makes the trees, uh, you realize now, looking from below, make them look uh, somewhat as if the branches were not as thick. They more look like, um, as if they were leafless, which from above, you didn't notice that much uh, with all the, the snow, it, it kind of mixes it up. <laughs> but as you're doing that, um, and you know, grabbing some of the, uh, cones left around and going a bit more upwards, you guys begin to hear the, a bit of the crunching of the snow. It's not slowing you at the moment, but now there's that sound um, in the pockets of snow is spread, spread out. As you're doing that and looking up, like you're very curious about this effect, how looking upwards, it kind of gets lost. And as you're doing that, um, I need to roll for something. Oh. Oh, that's concerning. Ooh, I love when the DM needs to roll for something. 
is this a moment where I should spend my channel points to make him roll with disadvantage? Or no, what if no, it's good? no, the channel points are there. Right. What if it's something good, though? Okay. Wow, that's that's surprising. Okay. Um, Threatening. Yeah, you see a bird passing by across and up in, in the trees. And you do, do notice that as it passes across the, the the leaves, it kind of gets mixed up and it's kind of not, it's a bit concealed by that coloration of the leaves as if it was like, as if looking up, the, the branches were making like um, camouflage. layers. Camouflage, yeah. We'll help it ca camouflage through it. And, but you managed to like just knock barely. You roll a 20 on itself. Oh. Um, you manage to catch it moving and catch where it's going. You're like, oh, that's a fascinating bird. Oh, that's a big bird. And you see another. Oh. All right. And begin noticing that they're kind of moving in a, like, circling your group. Look, if I, can I look at them through my heat signature thing? Because... We've established that they can hide. How many do I see? Do they have body heat? <laughs> okay. Um, I would keep in your, that same perception. You go. You move it up, and you see that. Um, yeah, with the the heat signature, you're able to see the, their shape better. They're very fast, which is helping with the, that concealment among along with the trees. Now, with the heat signature, you can see in between the trees um, and and the, the leaves. You only see two at the moment, but after you look in with them to that, you see they're large. They're like more or less three feet wide. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. And, Those are some oh, big ass birds, man. Yeah, that's the moment you realize the size. Uh, roll me life science. <laughs> okay, that's going to be quite good. I'm pretty good at life science as a professional botanist. That's a 24. Okay. You're like a professional botanist. This. What do I know about these birds? <laughs> as a professional, <laughs> um, as a professional botanist, all life I know of in science. <laughs> I imagine you also have some knowledge of other things beyond oh, yeah, plants, yeah, yeah. and you're and just you're catching them. Like, yeah, oh, they're large. Oh, that that beak. That beak doesn't seem to be one that you. Use. No, that seems more of a carnivorous beak. <laughs> oh. The memory, it's trigger on you. Uh, with that high roll, mm -hmm. um, you would identify, not sure from where or what planet, you would identify this as aerial devils. Oh, okay. <laughs> Indeed, carnivorous birds. Hmm. Now, uh, fellows, I, I, don't, I don't mean to be a wet blanket, but I just happen to have noticed that we are... Uh, in the company of two very large avian creatures, which uh, I have just recalled are called aerial devils. So, heads up. You know, every creature that's called devil doesn't, tr you know. Uh, at this point, like, as, so, like, every couple of, like, like, 60 feet or so, S is tying off, like, one of these way marker ribbons that is, like, a reflective, and he's tying this off just as, like, Null is talking about the aerial devils. I, I'm sorry, you said an avian bird called an aerial devil. Yes. Can we eat it? Well, it can eat us. Ah. See, when you said the word devil, I figured that it was a bad thing. And that statement just confirmed my fears. Uh, you're looking, you're, you were describing that, uh, Nolodius, and, and that, oh, you bitch. Sorry. <laughs> what just Sorry. happened? What did you talk to? You. Mosquito. Oh, okay. I was like, you don't have a cat. <laughs> it's the ghost Sorry, that lives with Sacrain. Um, you're saying that, and you're like going back to look at them. You don't see the first, but you see the second as it's doing a beeline toward your group. Uh, S is like, as soon as there was a confirmation, he's reaching for his gun. 
Oh. Roll initiative, everybody. <laughs> We're eating good tonight, guys. <laughs> All right. Okay. Green dice. Number one. Come on, Caduceus dice. Oh, no, that's not good. Ooh. Oof. Yeah. What's my initiative thing? Twenty-one. Hold on. Hold on. Be ready, <laughs> Sakrain. You asked us for initiative. Ooh, yeah, we won! Okay. Uh, 25 to 20. Wait, hey, Theta? Yeah? I sent you a message earlier. Can you just confirm if my eyes are wonky? <laughs> you sent me a message? It's just in the chat earlier. Oh. Oh, why did I direct message you? I meant to I tell know. everybody in the meeting that. Yeah. Just, um, are my eyes wonky? Because it could totally be my eyes being wonky. No, your eyes are not wonky. I don't think. Oh, okay. <laughs> these are not the correct prescriptions for my glasses, so that oh. could have totally just been me. Yeah, you're, you're good. Yeah. All right. 821, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, K got a 21. Okay. And Mac also got a 21? Yes. Okay. Uh, 20 to 15? Okay. Uh, 15 to 10? I got a 10. Right. Okay. Uh, <laughs> how much in the load he's got? Three. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll be back here with my okay. sword. <laughs> Three. Okay. Got it. Okay. So first in the turn order uh, will be... Uh, who has higher decks, Mac or K? Sacrine, check the chat. Um, um, I'm pretty sure Mac has higher decks. I have a 20 decks. Yeah, I've got a 14 decks. Okay. okay. Um, okay. Uh, let's, before we start on combat, uh, let's have a quick break for anything that we require. Bada Just boom. to make sure we have everything.
the stream. All right, we are back wow. then. And um, we left just as this uh, this pair of uh, large bird-like creatures with uh, long feathery, uh, leathery wings and this long uh, beak um, are, are circling our group. And suddenly one of them fl began flying directly toward Nulodius. And uh, for those wondering how it looks, you can see that in our Discord. Uh, in the homeward chat. I posted the image there. But oh, don't like those. <laughs> Nasty. Uh, the first one in the turn order, the first one to react quickly to the danger, uh, as her uh, spidey senses. <laughs> no, senses. it doesn't work. Yeah. Cowboy senses. senses. Cicada, Cicada senses. senses. <laughs> Cicada senses. Um, oh, that's right. Uh, who has higher decks, K or Mac? It's Mac. Okay, then Mac goes first. Uh, Those you see this bird. Go off. <laughs> the bird is Banjo going is right toward playing. toward Nulodius. Um You see, it's like at a good, uh, let's just say, like a good 50, 40 feet away at the moment, <laughs> making its way quickly. <clears throat> So what Mac will do? Uh, can I can I put you down now? Thank you. No. <laughs> you got down anyway. I, <laughs> yeah, I had to put him down so I could reach the mouse. Uh, I would love to shoot at it. Okay. Uh, I believe what I can do, I'm too zoomed in to understand what I can do, is called standstill. No, that won't work, never mind. But yeah, I'll shoot it. Okay, um, are you uh, just one shot or you're going to take a full full attack with two shots? Oh, I'll take a full attack with two shots and see what happens to this thing. Okay, in that case, you make the roll, the two attacks. You have a, a minus four because you're doing the mm -hmm. two shots consecutive, but you get two shots in your turn. Mm -hmm. And let's see right. how it goes. Let me get out against... a second D20 for this. Let's see how it goes against the bird. <clears throat> bird, 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 bird. So a minus four. Mm -hmm. With a minus four to the roll. Like do your full roll. Uh-huh. And and then uh-huh. How much was it? Did you did you so, uh one of them was a sixteen and the other one was a seventeen. Uh-huh. My attack bonus with my needler pistol is a six. So, so it will be a... Basically just a plus two at this point. So uh -huh. that's an 18. And... A mm, brain. <laughs> a 19. 19 and 19. Okay. Uh, you said needler pistol, pistol, right? That is a kinetic... Okay. So... Um, well, the f both hit, but the first one, uh, the aerial devil will use bullet eater. As yep. you see, it's going fast. You draw your weapon, your needle you pisser. <laughs> you shot the first, and you see even at that at that speed, it spins and with its beak catches the first needle. And toss it Did to the that side. That bird just eat my bullets. That's kind of cool. In, in your anger, you shoot again, and it hits him. Uh, roll damage for the second uh, attack. They eat my bullets. <laughs> mm. Two plus three, five. 
five. Okay. Okay, got it. Uh, you managed to hit it right into into the side of its uh, wing, but it remains steady as it continues flying right toward uh, Melodius. Next one in turn order will be K. Um, oh, that's a D6. Hold on a minute. I'm trying to manage with a cat on me, and it's not working. Okay. I'm just letting mine move to the floor. I'm just checking to make sure that he's okay. <laughs> You know what? I'm just going to arc pistol it and see if I can stun the piss out of it. Okay. Um, what's the range on this uh, arc pistol? 50. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Uh, roll your attack. 19. 19 does hit. Uh, roll your... Uh... Six, six plus, plus your level... So nine, yeah, nine damage, because I maxed out my damage roll. Okay. Okay, got it. Um, yeah, on that on that hit, the lightning shot from your uh, arc pistol goes through the trees and managed you managed to land it, the hit on it as it's uh, flying around. And uh, oh, I forgot he got to do something on those attacks. Okay, no. Mistake from the DM. It will be for the next Three, attacks. Eight my bullets. Okay. Uh, yeah, you managed, uh, you managed to hit it, and you see that... Is there just um, one attacking us right now? Uh, you heard... Tell? You heard from Nelodius that there are two. The other one, at the moment, you managed to see it is still flying away from you guys, but it's seems to be like... 60 feet, 70 feet away from you. Still a, a bit above into the uh, air, uh, taller areas of the trees. Get out of my dice tray. Thank you. Oh, it understands. Sorry. Um, Mine's got his entire tail in my dice tray, and he's trying to roll the dice so with yeah, his tail. You see the other one, at, like, it would be like 70 feet away from you. Anything else you would like to do on your turn? Um, with the other one not being close <laughs> enough to us, I don't think so. Okay. Got it. Uh, you remain where you're standing or get closer to anybody? I will move myself to be in front of Nelodius. Oh, thank you. Okay. You move there and you're right in the way of the the bird, which is its turn now. The bird, uh... uh oh yeah, it's... How intelligent is it? Ooh, no, never mind. Uh, yeah, it will go directly for you, uh, K, as you are now the, the thing right in front of it. And it will... Uh... Try to bite you. Cool. Um, does a 11 hit you? Um, I'm going to go with no. Okay. It's going for your KAC. Okay, then absolutely not. Yeah, I should play right. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, it tries to bite you. Um, it it closes that gap of 50 feet, 50 feet very rapidly and try to give you the bite before stopping right uh, Actually, we'll try to move out of the range after trying to bite you. Can I make that like super scary noise that I made on the ship to try to scare it away? Or is that something I can only do on my turn? Um, do you have anything that grants you like doing that as a reaction? I don't I, think I, I'm, so. I'm, I, I, it's not a maneuver or anything. It's just me screaming at it. That's why I asked. I think you have to do on your on your act on your uh, turn then. Okay, I will wait for yeah. my turn to scream at it to try to intimidate it away. Okay, um, it's going out of your melee range. So if you have a knife or anything that you want to, 
Oh, yeah. Jank at it. Yeah, I totally have a knife I will try to stab at it with. Yeah. Um. Melee attack. That's another 19. It does land on it. Uh, so roll your damage. D4. It's a 3 plus a 3. So that's... A... Wait, no. That's a 3 plus a 2 plus a 3. So that's six. That's eight. Brain. Man. Eight. <laughs> yeah, I brought a knife to a bird fight. <laughs> it's really, it's really good. I did more so, damage with the knife than I did with my stun gun. I think. Uh, so as you you go, like you shoot your your arc pistol into it, uh, even though you, like its movement seemed kind of blurry for how fast it's going, you run to the front, manage to distract the bird from hitting Nolodius. You evade the hit and then get your knife. And as it's going to fly away, get the slash right into the neck, bringing it down as it falls right into the into the floor, into the dirt floor. Can I still make my screaming noise while I do it? You can start making the scream noise. I will. You have to roll later on, but you can start making the noise <laughs> if you want. Free action to start the noise. Free For some reason, not the scream engine. Scream at it. <laughs> The screaming yeah, but, is a free action. <laughs> but the first bird is out. As you just murder it right there. Um, I had help. Yeah, you between you guys, you down the bird. Uh, next one in the turn order is S. All right, so... Uh, Here's me playing with strategy here. Uh, seeing that the last bird ate a bullet and I have a gun in my hand, uh, I would like to uh, wait and hold and prepare uh, a, an action. The trigger being that when someone else shoots this next bird that I'm in, expecting to come towards us, I will sh shoot. So, okay. Okay, eat okay. two bullets. <laughs> eat two bullets <laughs> i'm assuming it can only eat one <laughs> i can only i'm assuming it can only eat one at a time so i'm waiting for someone else to shoot so i can just take that opportunity eat two bullets get indigestion <laughs> yeah. i hope you get heartburn metal poisoning cast gun <laughs> okay, um, that's how i to kill the bird metal poisoning don't know I don't know if you can prepare, like, do you want you to shoot once or want to do full action, full uh, attack? A, so you, you standard attack and uh, you, you use a standard action to prepare to take a, a regular action. So a standard, it would just be a one attack, a single attack. Okay. Okay. I was looking for that, but thank you for that. Okay. Then, yeah, you prepare your attack. You draw your gun out and begin looking around for the next bird uh, waiting for uh, it gets shot by someone else, uh, which at this point... It's the turn of the bird. Um, let me see. So it went for you. You move over there. Uh, actually, yeah, the more isolated target right now, it's S. Uh, as you guys move, so it will go <laughs> right at, at you. Um, you see it covering those like 70 feet in an instant as it flies rapidly. And it will try to give an attack at you, which will be a total of no. Uh... <laughs> so I want to hear it. I want to hear no. it. What's the number? The number is nine. Yeah, no, that's not gonna. Yeah, no. Actually, that's actually, just a great mm, number. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, nine. A good um, number. Good yeah, the, number. The, the, I, I rolled a two, and the other one was uh, a four. Yeah. So it's 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 been great right now. Um <clears throat> yeah, the bird uh flies right at you, but it clumsily uh um tries to bite at you as so you move out of the way, still holding your, your shot, not uh, taking it. And it um it will continue like ten more feet as it's trying to do another sweep, uh, begin to make its way for another sweeping attack. Um and that point we come to Lotus. Perfect. Couple questions for you, my guy. Is this bird within thirty feet of me? At this point, uh, yes, it's right uh, at that range. Awesome, it's just ten feet away from S. So okay, 
Um, so, Null, seeing this bird do like a sweeping dive down to S, he gets sort of like a panicky reaction, and he reaches for the first thing that he recognizes as a weapon, which is his uh, cane sword, because he discovered that recently. Even though, logically speaking, he's not going to be able to stab this bird. But what happens is, as he pulls this sword from his uh, cane, there is a condensation of arcane dark void energy that coalesces um, on his hand and he is going to point the sword cane at the bird and I would like to cast mind thrust so I need to know does this creature have an intelligence score has a, an intelligence score okay yes. it has a minus five okay then I am going to need a wisdom nope a will saving throw from you a will okay let's see if will manage to manage to save okay uh it will be a total of uh non-natural 20. okay so you're gonna take half damage oh oh is that a dice jar yeah it's a it's a mason jar from the 1920s um, that my coworker found while he was out metal detecting. And we were out of sight, and he pulled something out of the back of his truck, and it bounced out, and I thought it was going to shatter against the asphalt, and then it didn't, and he gave it to me. Um, it's going to be 13 halved, so six points of... God, what kind of damage is this? It's psychic, I think, if I recall. Yeah, I believe it's psychic. Yeah, I would be surprised if it was something else from a mind it's called, thrust. Yeah, it's called mind thrust. It's called mind thrust. It's probably. Uh, you know what? It might be. It might be bludgeoning. <laughs> Hang on, it's See? gotta say it somewhere. Hang on. Um, I'm using a new program, and it's not. Um, we'll assume it's psychic. Which it's don't psychic. worry, this thing, this thing has no kind of resistance to anything in particular. Cool. So yeah. Yeah. So um, he he casts mind thrust. And it has like this sort of keening shriek as it bursts forth from the tip of his sword. And then he like pauses for a second, like, well, which wasn't what I planned, but. For the rest of you, you managed to see like the distortion of energy moving across quickly toward the bird and uh, landing into it. Uh, it doesn't do much to it in terms of like making it lose balance, but it did something. You, you can see still it, it made it sway a bit in his movement and um next one in the turn order after that will be back to mac at the top uh so <clears throat> bird's still alive how far away is the bird <laughs> um still 10 feet away from s so from you would be like 15 10 feet away from you too as he came from the side You can shoot it if, if you want. Shoot the bird! How high, how, how high up is the bird? Um, Let's say it did like a sweeping. So like probably from your head up, five, seven feet up above, like kind of thing. Here's my, my last terrible question of the day for now. Does a bird count as a vehicle? <laughs> Depending on the size of the bird, but would I think it will be more. Would this crazy bird found count as a vehicle? No, this one would not count as a. Oh. Here's my terrible plan. Uh, I you're gonna be so bad at me. I am. I am, and I'm okay with that. I, I decided to play tactics. Tactically, okay. what what you will do? What to tactic? Me. I'm gonna draw my my uh dueling sword. Fuck the gun. Got the gun in one hand. I got the sword in the other. I'm going for this bird. Okay, you might need to jump a bit to. to I'm land jumping it, but... for this bird. Okay, you move and you jump. So roll me your attack with the with the sword. It will go for its KAC. It's its kinetic armor class. Does S want to take the shot as this is happening? 
No, I, I my trigger was if someone else was shooting the bird. I'm not. Okay. You're I have still a stab at the bird if I shoot it. So uh... yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> I mentally tormented the bird. Yeah. Look, if it 24. saves me a bullet, I'm okay. <laughs> Twenty-four. It it does hit and. Yeah, it, it, it can't use its bullet eater ability because that's not a bullet. You're right. It's a sword. <laughs> so how much damage six. it will be? How much? Ten. Ten. Okay. You, yeah, you, you hurt S. You tried to hurt S. No, that's a no-no zone. Yeah, you managed to slash at it uh, toward the... And you connect right at the torso. You were trying to go for the wings, but it's still yeah. pretty good hit. It looks bloodied and it's shrieking uh, out of pain. And next in the turner would be uh, K. I'm gonna As you are, at it. roll intimidation, and I will say you will get a plus four to that because it Ooh, is. Stop. I'm trying to roll a <laughs> here. I need you not in my dice tray. <laughs> Um, you said a plus four? Yeah. I mean, to all of that, what you have on your intimidation, oh, you have a plus, plus D6 to it, too. Hold on a minute. <laughs> so many right. bullets. So that's 19 plus your four <coughs> plus my 14. Somebody else do math, because I'm broke. 19, four, and 14? Yeah. Uh, 26? That's... 19 plus 18. 27. No, it's 30, 37. <laughs> yeah, it's 37. It's 19 plus 18 at that point. <laughs> I took the DC, I was, the DC I was going for in this case was it, you know, I was going to roll for it with uh, for his will, will save and at its CR. No. I just um, you begin making shit out of it. It's a CR of two. It's a CR two creature, and it has I'm a plus it. one at will. He <laughs> was not going to make it. He was not going to make it at all. With the very something, um, yeah. You begin making your cicada noises loudly, and um, they are ringing in everybody's ears, including particularly this bird, as it flies off, taking. Um, Ah, uh, you know what? The sky oh, yeah, because a, it's... Um, opportunity of attack as it flies away. Do I Here's get an attack thing. opportunity as it flies away from me? That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> if I was primed to shoot... Here's the thing. That's K turn. The next one in the turn order would be S, and then the bird would have its turn to escape. Okay. Then again, this, this is all happening in, in seconds. Yeah. So... It, you know what? S, yeah. are, are, you, are you taking your shot? It's if it's flying away, yeah, I'll take the shot. Yeah, it's it's, it's begin to fly away as uh, all of this mess is happening in an instant. Yeah, I, I'm <coughs> expecting that this thing is since it's not looking at me, it may not eat the bullet because I'm trying to hit it to back. Um, so I'll take a mm. shot. You know what? Wait, the bird. Actually, yeah, you're right. The aerial devil must be aware of the attack, and it's right now not facing you. So I, yeah. It, how much was it? Cool, cool, cool. That is a 20, not natural, to hit. It, it, it lands. Okay, great. Uh, but! And, and <laughs> my fancy damage now, because I can add stuff to it because of my operative stuff, means that it does six points of damage. Six points of damage. Okay, yep. Uh... So with that shot, the, the ringing of the uh, semi-automatic automatic pistol that you're carrying with, um, you manage to see the blood coming out as it just 15 feet a ahead, it just falls and rolls, not moving. Dead and bird? Lower the, the gun from the shot. Dead birds. After those shots of the guns and the ringing, which for your ears still, yeah. Oh yeah, I'm not looking at that. K. 
yeah, Kay, Kay has stuff for a moment uh, doing the sounds, but y- your ears just ringing. But all around you, there's just silence after the shots and, and the commotion, and you're out of combat. I put my sword and my gun away as panic neatly as I can. The sword kind of just, uh, gun's not strapped in, running over to S. <laughs> Make sure uh, S is okay. Uh, S is holstering his pistol. Uh, uh, mine's not totally holstered. It's fine. Yeah, I, I, I am assuming that at this point S has found a proper holster for the gun that he found off the dead person. Uh, so he's holstering his pistol. Uh, he's fine. <laughs> he's not looking at K. Uh, <laughs> no, neither is Mac! <laughs> Thank you, chat. I appreciate that every kill begins with K. Every kill begins with K. <laughs> I love it. I love oh, this Jay, chat tonight. <laughs> They're just on our level. They're just absolutely it, it, it's, yeah. it's true. Back with the undead, K was like, like everybody was like, okay, let's sneak. And just K walking <laughs> around the corner. And it's just <laughs> oh, everybody. I haven't gotten a single kill. Oh, God. So, uh, yeah, no, uh, after that, uh, Ice is going to take out the binoculars off the back, uh, the backpack, and I'm going to scan the area for any other threats. <laughs> Roll a perception check. I can do that. Um, so that is a plus Better seven. Check S for injuries. <laughs> S looks fine. Sure. And- I got a natural one, guys. Oh. <laughs> Am I going to the universe? <laughs> Does gravity oh. stop for me? <laughs> or, um, I'm gonna start crying. You guys have seen no, no, that, no, 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 that, no. that Mac that, is the, the, just the... like in the face of S. Like, are you okay? <laughs> yeah. And S is just like trying to use the binoculars, and all they see is a really big close up of Mac's face. <laughs> like every all I see is Mac's chest because because Mac is yeah. an entire foot high. Mac is so dumb. Yeah, He's... um, I am not doing the thing of like natural one immediate failure, but this is still an eight. Mm-hmm. It, it would still be an eight, so. So it's still an Amos in front of you, blocking yeah. your way. Uh, Mac, I'm, I'm, I, I need to see Mac. I'm <laughs> fine. Uh, I'll, just, I'll do this later. Well, <laughs> no, like, pauses for a moment is, like, sort of watching Mac fuss over Ez. And he clicks his sword cane back in place, like, holds back up his thermal scanner and begins continuing walking forward. And as he's going past Mac, he's going to, like, properly sheath Mac's sword <laughs> without saying a word and just huffily walk away and continue on. Also ignoring K. <laughs> also ignoring K. It's a very scary bug. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um... Oh, my God. <laughs> you, guys, you guys are traumatized I'll say that after by I... K this point and everybody else is just like i don't understand they're a very helpful individual they're very kind you haven't seen their angry side it's like i love i will say they is so scary (laughs) i will say that by the time that uh as is putting away the binoculars he'll look over to k at least a warning next time k's gonna like fidget with their fingers and i was trying to scare them away I thought it would work. It it did. I got the shot. I'm also kind of shaken up, but when you do those noises. I'm sorry. And, like, the head is tilted down. Like, anybody else, it's like that shamed, I'm sorry. But it's in your mind still, because Kay mm-hmm. still hasn't figured out how to talk normal. One day, one day they will, but right now it's it's pretty much all telepathic. Yeah. And it's just that, that sensation of, I'm really, really sorry, and like truly meaning it. S doesn't say anything in response, but would um, 
as he he would walk over to Kay and um, unhooks the radiation scanner. Uh, I mean, just in the future, a heads up. You can practice with this. Uh, and hands over the uh, the radiation scanner, which will beep if there's any radiation that's nearby. So like it'll it'll do all the work for you. They take it. They look it over a little bit, and then they turn it on. So. And then we start uh, walking, I guess. Yeah. Uh, S goes back to, like, counting out the spaces, so that way we can start tying more of those uh, way marker uh, ribbon. Okay. You begin, con continue walking through this uh, a bit of a forested area, and uh, takes you another five minutes walk before you come out of the trees into what would be more of a proper mountain and an area with more more um, more inclination and more um, I forgot the name of it uh, more of a rocky area but right in front of this section you begin seeing the crystal formations coming and true uh, uh, right in the open, some going into into cave areas, and they're right right there. Did you do see there occasionally? Uh, like do like a, like glint uh, in a way that would seem like it's reflecting the light of the sun, but they're doing that even when you're not moving, and from places that even when there's um, shadow, they do that. And I'm a, a part of that. Uh, uh, I would say a Nolodius roll mysticism. Ooh. I think you're the only one with mysticism in the group. Possible. It's a 17 on die, so it is a 27. What? I'd count yeah, that as having mysticism, <laughs> yeah. Um, so you're looking at this and you would recognize now that you see it physically uh, instead of just being mentioned that it's just the crystal in the uh, um, in the engine you recognize mm -hmm. it as uh, arcanite which is <laughs> <laughs> to explain we had no fucking clue what was the crystals on there so everybody just came up with a name like oh my god that, that name is actually really good <laughs> I, um, I, I asked I asked that question. I was like, hey, what's the chemical composition of the crystals? Because I'm a nerd and I have a degree in geology. I just took a lot of mineralogy classes. And he's like, hey, what do you mean? I was like, let me talk to you about rocks for too long. Uh, <laughs> it, it was fascinating. Um, so explain this a bit of what came out of that conversation. <laughs> so you're seeing this arcanite and this type of crystals, you identify that they are good for, in general, um, conducting uh, arcane energy from spells and things like that. And as you're looking at it, you're like, oh, yeah, that could also work as a catalyst and things like that. Mm -hmm. And seeing this one in particular and the coloration and how they're interacting with the surroundings, um, you're thinking, oh, okay, that explains why this is necessary. This is one that seems to be more focused on the conjuration uh, uh, school of magic, which would uh, like you begin to piece in. Oh, this would uh, help for uh, stabilizing the the engine to going into this realm of the drift and keeping it steady. Like it, it begins to all make sense to you why this crystal would be required and why the sensors would pick it very clearly. Like ah, this is where this crystal might be. Um, and you see various formations of them across um, right in front of you. Uh, just, just say like from the trees to where you see it, it's like uh, like a hundred, a hundred and twenty feet away from you. That you, you just need to walk over there, okay, into the more rocky sections of of this uh, this landscape. Question: How big are the crystals? Is there like a range of sizes? Is there uh, theoretically for a random non-specific example? Yeah. Would, would Null be able to pick one up and put it in his pocket without anyone seeing? Uh, that doesn't seem like a non-specific example. Just right? non-specific. <laughs> well, I mean, in particular... If Kay shoots it with the gun, 
that the mining guy <laughs> you'll get plenty of chunks that are small enough for you to pick up yeah, and we also have two pickaxes too that's fair so okay. here's a few things uh there's no loose crystals they seem to be coming from the ground as a formation interesting okay yeah they're they're like we're having archives kind of, from this they're kind of blooming in t out of, of the ground and things. Mm -hmm. They're not That's loose. That's no blade. And uh, thank you for catching both of you. <laughs> Two of the <laughs> references and ideas that I was uh, grabbing for those. Like the ether coming from the Bionis. <laughs> yes. Yes. One of the, the, the ideas for that. Um, and without that role of mysticism, you also know that... Mm -hmm extracting the crystal is not like i'm just gonna chunk this piece mm. because it can lose part of the of that conduction that is carrying inside of it, it needs to be more of a, a meticulous extraction and mining to get a correct piece even if it's small or big you need to be a bit more careful with it uh so if you would also want a piece of that you would have to dedicate a bit of time to extract one and not just it wouldn't work just a chunk that may come out from we're swinging a pickaxe. Gotcha. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Null is going to relay at least the information about um, how this has to be mined to like mm -hmm. retain the, the energy. So, as I'm sure most of you know, uh, particularly those of you who have worked in the engine, um, this is Arcanite, and it is the the crystal found within the the drift engine uh, has a tendency to act as a uh, catalyst of sorts for arcane energy um, to, to condense and magnify that sort of energy, which is what is uh, used inside of a catalyst uh, engine, uh, dry drift, and I don't know the engineering part of it. But I can tell you that to retain the, the properties of uh, arcane manifestation as well as possible, we need to be very careful as we extract it. So, what I've got is two pickaxes and a laser. Sekri. Yes? Can I roll, like, engineering or something to see if I can figure out how to mine this based on the shape of the crystal that was in the drift engine? Like, do I so that I could get a proper size of it? Actually, um, hmm. the one that has seen directly, the engine has been uh, Mac Amos. But if you're training engineering, I would say that both of you can... Uh, yeah, I would be down to... Roll to... Uh, yeah, uh, just so... I'm yeah, sorry, roll can, for that, and... I can help them if you would prefer them roll it. I was just asking. Whoever wants to... You you got the idea, so if... Like, how, however you want to RP the situation, if you want to yeah. think it for yourself or share it or... But, well, tell me how, how you want to work it out. What's your engineering? Um, my engineering is a plus 12. Well, you've got actually better engineering than I do. Okay. I've got a 14 on engineering. Do we all just want to like RP a little brainstorm? <laughs> I mean, like that's kind of where Ash was gonna, because like uh, um, with Noel saying, you know, we need to do this carefully. Um, Ash is like, all right, uh, well, uh, what would be the best place to to strike? I guess like, well, it would need to be the same rough size and shape as the one that we already have. The one that's in the drift engine, which would look something like this, and hit Mac would like draw, draw it out. That's snow, so yeah, we yeah, can he'll it draw it out with like the back end of the pickaxe in the snow, <laughs> like a five-year-old. <laughs> we move all the way back. That's like a fifth-grade education. <laughs> um, so let's let's make it that this way. This is how I was thinking. Um. Each one of you can bring something like either a role of a specific skill, or you know, and an, if you want to do an attack roll with the with the mining laser or the the pickaxe or a laser, you can go and you tell me what are you bringing to the table to to the situation. You in total in, in total 
I was going to start Spanglish in there. Um, you need uh, <laughs> three successes. Okay. Um, again, tactical mind here. Uh, Noel had mentioned overseeing this project uh, <laughs> earlier. I know that was mainly because of, like I don't do anything that needs is required here. Um, can S uh, in lieu of taking a more directive approach become more a tool and you and just be <laughs> not like I'm thinking now. He like, picks up his baseball cap, turns it around, yeah. and turn me out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> become um, a tool. <laughs> right. But no, like um instead can, of like trying to uh, I know, over I think I know what you're trying to say is can null basically give a plus to any of us as a guiding tool. Right, because, like, S here is, like, just ready to be strength. That's why he grabbed the pickaxe. Okay, um, I would say, what was your overall role for mysticism? No. 27? Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, you would get a, 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 whatever you guys will do in the next sections for, for you three, I will get a, a plus to which whatever you are, you are doing, so... Uh, then um, I'm rolling an attack with the pickaxe to try and lodge okay. Freya. Okay. Um, or the seismic, uh, mm -hmm. whatever. And K is doing engineering? Engineering, yeah. Okay. And... Mm, words. Fixing his uh, baseball cap. And Mac, what will do? It's his baseball cap for half a second. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Ah, better. All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, I so. can I can do an attack and be directed uh -huh. uh, by Nelodius or uh, K. Okay. So I rolled a thirty-two. Easy. Um, I was gonna yeah. say the the DC was twenty-eight. <laughs> I was Again. about to say that. Yeah, the, I'll be the, a tool. <laughs> for skills, it would be 28. For attacking, it would be an 18. So with that, 28, uh, 31. Yeah, 31, you said. Um, you're 32. Okay. Uh, you take the information that Amos is giving, which, granted, Amos is not exactly the best one in just giving direct descriptions sometimes, but you're grabbing with the information you're getting and your knowledge and things that you've been hearing. And also information having the data path, you're figuring like, okay, it might require this, 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 and putting up with with how the description of putting the theoretical and mystical parts of knowledge that that knowledge is share with you, how to apply it into a practical situation of how and where to hit it, how to hit it, frequency, and you, with that you would also go for um, uh, give that information to S, and as you go and the pickaxe you power on. And you begin feeling how it turns on, and the pickaxe begins to look like blurry as it is vibrating, and it's now powered. So go for your. Uh, it's just a melee attack, right? Melee attack. Uh -huh. All right. Remember cool. that because this is a mining tool, mm -hmm. you're not proficient with. You're not a professional miner, so you have a minus four on the attack. Okay. Like he gets cool. A plus two for us doing um, the stuff, so it's really just a minus yeah. two. So yes. Um, I've got a 17 on the die. Uh huh. My melee attack bonus is four, which is negated by the mining on proficiency, which then adds a plus two on that zero, which gets me a 19, which is one above the 18 that I needed. <laughs> exactly. Uh, perfect. Am I, perfect. Am I hitting it as well? Is that what we yeah. read here? Yeah, right. if you so, if you use uh, the mining pick, then you go I and did, roll the. Uh, uh, I rolled an eighteen on the dice, and I have an attack bonus of five. Minus four is one, which is nineteen. <laughs> plus the, the, plus, the two, plus then, two, yeah. which now makes it twenty-one. We so, get the rock. <laughs> it, it takes you some time as you're trying to be careful and I would say it would extend a bit more as the rules were at least for the actual part of mining it 
have been very close to the to where you have to hit. So it takes you almost an hour, a bit more, as you're planning and you begin going carefully hitting. At some points, being like, no, 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 don't, don't, don't hit that that way. Hit it this way. Um, but eventually, you get a very, very good sized chunk that will be, will serve perfectly for the engine. Oh God. Um none of us thought about this i certainly didn't how much does it weigh do we have a sled yeah. <laughs> i've got rope <laughs> we got rope and a mac <laughs> and you are downhill going toward the, the, so, the ship, um, so. okay i've got i'm not 50 gonna feet of kick rope. it down the sh- down the hill and no, 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 Jones style. <laughs> no, I have an idea. I have an idea. Between Mac and S, right? Um, we fashion the rope kind of like how they do like the heavy lifting for like the slings that you put the couches on. So oh, we yeah, have like furniture the, Right, right. So we have a lattice of the rope underneath that we put the crystal on, and then the two of us will be fine. And I can I can be in the re- rear and use my uh the ice uh hiking boots to help keep grip as we go down so we don't go sliding. I you like don't that. need to roll for, for that. And you take your time to get ready this. And I will let you guys know, you guys managed to evade a confrontation with an Earth Elemental. Oh, wow. So. Well, <laughs> three successes. Let's the, go. Hell yeah. Yeah, it was going to be an earth elemental, if you got uh, two failures, it was going to be two earth elementals, so you might need to run along with the crystal. You were going to get it, just surprise people. Um, but yeah, you begin making your way down. Town. Town. <laughs> <laughs> Walking not so fast. <clears throat> yeah. Walking kind of slow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I do. Th- making- well, I mean, not really, because, okay. Um, when I have the spikes, I have a five foot detriment to my speed, which means that I have a walking speed of 35. You're still faster than me. <laughs> so we're not really we're not going so slow. But... Speed walker no. in the mall. Oh, yeah. S yes. speed walks everywhere. Have the, have the same walking speed. I just have longer legs. Oh, my um, God. I have that, too. Um, yeah, you make your way down. Oh my god! I need, no, we make our way you back return. to the ship. You make your way back to the ship. I'm taking you, the meat yeah. with us, by the way. If we walk past the, <laughs> oh, the dead birds. oh, <laughs> I'm taking the dead birds back to the ship. Every time you go, take a piece. Guys, we got the crystal and you. dinner. <laughs> hey, Kay is thinking it can be used in some way. On the ship, she didn't want to just leave it. That's it fair. I be used for one second. I thought you were gonna say in her food sculpture, but like you better not make <laughs> no. a meat sculpture. No. Please don't make no. a meat sculpture, Kay. <laughs> oh my goodness, no. Kay is Freaking not that scary, guys. House of Wax here. Mm. So, mm. um, taxidermy I... in in Kay's room. No, that's not what Kay is into. <laughs> Well, I know, uh, at I least know. if we ever return to this planet, uh, we do have a marking trail uh, to get to the caves that have the crystal. So, yeah, um, you grab the two aerial devils that were um, one was cut down, the other one was shut down. Um, shut through the heart. Well, more like the butt, but you know, <laughs> shut um, through the butt. butt! <laughs> and you're too late. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Maybe also, maybe S does go to the mines for real. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I, 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 I told you I'm chaos, chaos night. tonight. I will Y'all assume. I assume um, K and Noel were the ones taking the birds. And with the past role you had with life science, um, Noel, you see that these birds kind some of them seem to also have some of the like scratches and scars that may have been of trying to catch something in the air too so oh, there's something bigger there's, than this guy out there who knows <laughs> uh like, more he... around the the area of, like as you saw it grabbing a, a, a needle shot into the air so maybe like you're going like oh like 
somehow these things were also trying to catch stuff in the air from before mm. practice. Mm. No one will remember this. Um, I'll have to think what the hell you can get out of this, this two mm-hmm. Aerial Devils, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, let yeah, me recover them. Did you say the blood? Could work. No, leather. No, oh. she said leather. <laughs> oh, well, you said Maybe blood. Maybe blood like, too. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, it could be like using the the wings as leathery to to make like some sort of glider. I'm getting <laughs> ideas. I'm getting ideas. Um, oh, so yeah, goodness. you get back to the ship with the crystal and your two uh, aerial de- devils, and one setting up and putting the, the crystal in a place that it won't be moving around. You uh, ratchet strap it down. Uh, yeah, I was in a fast in it, but that's not the word. Secure it in, mm-hmm. in the cargo section of the ship. Oh, yeah. Mac and... definitely like secures that puppy to, to like in a protective if Mac had access to like a thousand pounds of bubble wrap, he would wrap that crystal in bubble wrap and then like secure it. I might have a spell. I think we'll be okay, guys. Oh, we probably we will. We're overthinking it by looking at a bucket. Oh, absolutely. Oh, a thousand percent. But if you've ever seen like kids coming out like like winter and they're they're like stuck like this because they're oh, wearing I, so many layers. Yeah. I know. That's what Mac is thinking about doing with this crystal <laughs> right now to make sure that it's okay because <laughs> he doesn't want to come back down. I have nothing useful. Never mind. You take your time to secure it, and uh, I assume Mac will pilot and S will co-pilot. Why not? It worked so well last time. Okay. Um, <laughs> Mac, again, taking your time or or gonna try to get back fast to the ship? Oh God, why do I feel like this is a trick question? Because it is. Take your time. We'll be fine. <laughs> it's, we're not Unless in any there's kind something... of rush. We've. we've I know. <laughs> Sacred's face just made me rethink everything. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's a DM trick. It's yeah. fine. I know. Mm. Don't take a drink of water like you're in the city. You're separate. <laughs> you oh. made him spew his water. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll take my time. I can barely... No, 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 no. I was going to say something. Um... Cherry, <laughs> what I was gonna say. Uh, <laughs> you make your okay? you make your your way back calmly again with a twenty six on your piloting. Uh, um, takes you some time to get out, out of the uh, the atmosphere of the planet and stratosphere and up into space. As uh, you know, you're a- avoiding trying to get too much. Oh. Do you guys know what is like that effect? Like why why things like when I go out in and out of space, they kind of burn a bit. What's because of? Uh, it's what? the like the oxygen burning off. Yeah, mm. yeah. It's it's like like if, time, as so. you're as you're pushing, imagine you you have like a layer of soap on water. If you push your uh-huh. hand down through it, you're gonna pull some of that soap with you down mm-hmm. into it. It's like that, except you're pulling oxygen either into an anoxic or an oxygen rich environment, and it burns. Yeah, okay. really oxygen is like effect. highly flammable. Yeah, that's yeah. why we. That's why you shouldn't effect. breathe one hundred percent oxygen in space because he'll blow up. It's also yeah. why you shouldn't smoke while you have an O two oxygen on your nose. That is so true. Also correct. Wow, I never thought about that. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I had one guy tell me that's how he wanted to go. I told him he was crazy. I feel like that's going to result in burning to death, which is one of the yeah. worst ways to die. Yeah. Yeah. That's, Horrifying. that's not cool. He said he would do it next to his oxygen tank and blow himself up. I saw and him everything I else. Risk. <laughs> hey, chat. Uh... That no. is the, the, the trick, the, the, the trivia oh info of, of today. <laughs> Last week was books. Now is. <laughs> You can you can die horribly if you smoke with the thing. Oxygen. Either way, yeah. you make oxygen is very flammable. That's today's life lesson. From yeah. the- um, <laughs> you back to being in the shuttle in one or two. You 
uh, go up into the atmosphere and the stratosphere and back into the emptiness, black void of space. You know, way relaxing for you, Mac. And for all of you, it's weird as you move forward and begin to see the silhouette ever growing more and more bigger of the Dralark. And as you're going up there, you hear in the comms. Hey, I wonder it too. Uh, this is Bridge. This is um, the Dralark. This is Mohibel. Um, how we see your, you guys coming back. Everything all right? Yeah, we got the crystal. And meat. Well, dinner, I think. We got two dead birds too, so if you want to come get those, take them to the kitchen galley. I don't think it'll be enough to feed everyone. Probably not, but it's something. I was thinking exactly that. Uh, good to know that you guys got two birds for approximately 900 people. I am two glad birds we and are... one stone. Look, they tried to kill us first and we <laughs> were retaliated. <laughs> we got two Why birds. Why am I and justifying one stone, this baby? to you? The birds are a bonus. Take it or leave it. I figured they would make good compost. Yes, we could we could use them in the greenhouse. Well, Avian bones are very to... good for fertilizer. Uh, okay, I will trust in the guy that is from the science department if he says that. I honestly don't know much about that. By the way, glad to see you coming back. We'll get no, we'll we'll get the hangar and engineering know that you guys are bringing back the crystal. Everything all right on Jalak? Uh, yeah, everything all right, just honestly just hear, um, hearing complaints from the engineering. They want to get the, the assembly. Voice complaints. Yeah, they want to get Tell the assembly. To sit on their hands. Back on. I'll be back in a minute. Ish. I will not tell them that directly, but I will let them know that's the sentiment you're sharing. Drylark out. Mac's just and. not taking it from engineering anymore. I feel like Mac just complains to S about engineering in the room. Probably. <laughs> S in the in the path is like over I'm cigarettes and coffee, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you arrive to the draw arc and um, you pass kind of kind of in front of the bridge as you go into the uh, side entrance of the left, you, you exited the right entrance and you enter into this tunnel section and without scraping, without leaving your mark on your way in. And uh, you uh, arrive toward the hangar section. It's still kind of a mess. You now see they have more or less moved some of the um, stuff that was laying around and some of the damaged uh, ships to the back section that seems to be more of the proper um, hangar. And you carefully land right as you land and exit out with all your belongings, all your, your gear. Um, just uh, see... Uh -huh. Uh, quick thing, I'm gonna leave the emergency beacon on there because I, I, I'm 100% claiming Wanderer 2 as our ship <laughs> whenever we go out. Okay. I've formed a connection. Okay. Wanderer beacon. 2. Wanderer 2 will be the official ship for the group. We're gonna rename that ship. <laughs> what name will you put it? We'll have oh, to talk about that later. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that. But I formed a connection with this Tina. ship. <laughs> we can't name this ship tonight. We're too much in chaos mode. It's, it's fucking Tina. Tina. I need Tina. Are we no, going to what? No, 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 not tonight. No, it's just, it, it's just it's kind of a, a, a new joke, terrible new joke that broke everybody when that happened. Oh, no, all right. But we've, we've claimed Wanderer 2, and I'm actually kind of cool with Wanderer 2 as the name, but uh, we'll talk about that later. Yep, and, and you see, um, as you come out, some of the engineering people, like, waiting there, you see that they are discussing with the um, uh, hangar chief engineering 
um, the, the the kasatha, you know, the one with long, uh, elongated uh, head, of forearms, is still just arguing about things, and they see you, and like oh, they they perk up and go toward toward you. Um, so the one, I, uh, uh, just to like a flavor, I don't want to say anything to the kasatha, uh, noticing that he sees us. I just want to like look over to uh, to uh, Mac, and it's like we just pull out the crystal. <laughs> Not even yeah. saying anything. Don't don't even say anything. Just pull out the crystal. I want to see that look on his face. I showed you mine. Now show me yours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. You you pull out the crystal and you get it out of the ship, and the engineering engineering group that is there like perks up immediately. Like, oh my god, yes, I, I'm like go to help you carry it. And um, one of them that is uh looks like like uh. <laughs> Like a, a, a kind of a, a um, bit of a, a, a pale skin, la shunta, dark uh, black hair approaches and says, "Oh, thank goodness! Uh, we uh, fortunately, fortunately, we got the services uh, uh, elevators from the hangar that will take us a bit more directly toward the core instead of having to go all the way around that you came through. Um, we can take you there uh, if you guys want to." A, 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 Amos, you're, you're Amos, right? Mac, Amos, he says, looking at you. Oh, oh he's looking at me. Cool. Yeah. Yes. Like, yeah. Uh, um, are you coming along to, with, with, uh, to the engineering, to the address engine, along with the chief? Or are you just... You know what? Yes. We, we take... You, you guys brought it. We, we can take it over there to, to the engineering. And, and if the chief asks for you, I would just wish to let you know that you went to... Yeah, uh, he's actually like stops looking at us. He's just gonna respond. And he's, yeah, uh, if you need Paige, just, it, I, I got comms. He knows where to find me. Yeah, we, we take it and we'll begin um, getting it in the drift engine. All right, boys, let's carry this baby to the engine. And they get a hold of it. They're, they're like three, four engineers and they grab it and make their way. And over there in like, toward the um, the entrance to the control section of the hangar, you see the Kasatha, both pair of arms crossed. Don't and... drop it. <laughs> the engineers not, and they carry it carefully. They're not being, they're not, uh, they're not fucking being, around. Uh, they're not fucking around. <laughs> no, this is, this is important. They're not being sloppy about that, but um, you do see some people are giving you some weird glances toward the birds. Like, what is that? But yeah, you're back in the, back, back, back at the drill arc. I'm gonna go get twisty. That's at the bridge. So that's where I'm going. Okay. I'm just leaving everything to everyone else to handle, and I'm gonna go get my pet. Now that uh, we're back on the ship, like. It's a few minutes after you've left towards the bridge that you get a, on the comms S. Um, uh, you take care of the radiation scanner. And he's going to fully give you the radiation scanner that he picked up for K. Okay. I will so, add it to my inventory so I don't yeah, forget that um, I have it. It's a radiation sweeper. That's the name yeah, of it. Yeah, the, the radiation sweeper. So I'm going to take that off of my inventory list as S has given it to Kay. Radiation thing. Okay. Yeah. I'll send you the link on it so that way you've got radiation it. Radiation thingy. Radiation thing scanner. That's what my inventory yeah. says. It works. Nice. I'll laugh at it later. What is this? Hey, <laughs> no. Where do you uh want these birds? I was unaware I was the uh, bird master. Um, I can take them. I'll take them over to the greenhouse, put them in the bio composter. I really don't think we should eat them just because we don't know what they've eaten. Uh, and we'll by also the time... put a bullet in one that probably won't taste good. One of them ate one of my bullets, so if you find that, I'd like it back. Uh, give me two or three weeks and I can get it back. Yeah, if you happen to find it, you find it. Hey, uh, 
over you over this snaps fingers just uh, one with somebody in the hangar who's available to help Noel take these birds to wherever how heavy are they can my little <laughs> negative one I think they are if I recall from the, <laughs> the information you. hold on if I recall from the information I think they're 10 question LB is pounds right yes for yes. abbreviation yes. Yeah, they're, they're more or less 10 pounds each. Okay, so he'll carry one, and he's going to cast uh, Psychonetic Hands to carry the other. Okay, Does somebody um, come push the buttons for Null? You, um, yeah, you, you, you're carrying it. You're grabbing one and the other. Um, would would the, um, the Psychokinetic Hands would be visible, or is it more like just a force? Uh, that... Psychokinetic Hand, hang on. Its target is one unattended object, which is fun. You point your finger at the target object. Oh, I don't know what that is. Um, I imagine it's like Mage Hand. Yeah, I, I was I was thinking if it was like Mage Hand. It it doesn't say if it looks like anything. I'm gonna say it does. It is visible, and it takes the form of like spectral vines coming out of just the ether and like wrapping around it and carrying it okay yeah um so you go around the carrying those to um i assume you will take it to the um, greenhouse or you're taking them to the science division section i'm gonna put them in the same machine where we've been putting bodies <laughs> <laughs> yes that's where the dirt comes from guys <laughs> fridge okay. and iron <laughs> We just that don't will, tell anybody. That will <laughs> be to composter. <laughs> yep, that will be toward the greenhouse area. There you go. Yep. Um, uh, <laughs> Mac and S, but... you guys doing anything as we are closing for tonight? Um, I want as S goes back, uh, Hilda start working on his personal project of trying to get into his the um the personal data pad that triggered that memory and trying okay. to hack into that but that's something that we can go over like details of later but that's like a side yeah. project that he's been doing yep um as you go back to your room you do find you left some processes working to kind of recover some of the information of at least where people are staying mm -hmm. you see that it's almost done in, right. in the next five hours from well, no, before you had like a long time to wait now right. it seems like four hours five hours before it's completed and some of that information you can already start sending it like so yeah. people can of course you know i'm hooking my man volleyball up uh mac i'm gonna uh probably help uh s the best i can with whatever they're doing that isn't their side project that they won't let me touch. Yeah, there's a lot of things that I was just like, hey, don't, hey, don't touch, <laughs> uh, which may just consist of Mac bringing us coffee consistently. <laughs> coffee and cigarettes. That's, that's all and I cigarettes. think. That's all that you that's, got there. That's their domestic life. You've just gotten a peek of that. Uh, it's a lot of coffee and cigarettes. But Mac is going to. Probably between that, he'll maybe help if he can't help Kay get through to some of her files. See if he can help her with that. Because he's, he's fixed at least some of engineering. The drift engine should potentially work. And if they need him, they'll call. But it seems that the next thing that we should be focusing on is helping people figure out who they are. So he'll probably help K and S okay. with that. Uh, okay, that will be for a bit done. And mm -hmm. meanwhile, as as you guys were like making making sure where to go and things like that, K, you arrive back at the um, bridge, and you see the the usual suspects in in the bridge. Um, and this time in in the controls of the um 
Actually, no, there wouldn't be the controls. There would be like in the table, in the control table, um, the two pilots, including the Sheeran that you uh, gave. Um, twisty. Twisty. I was going to call it uh, Proc, but that's different. Um, that's that's actual... what it's called. That's it. Yeah. yeah it's, um, and, and you see that, um, well, um, the Sheeran has a weird scarf right now. Like a kind of like a half fluffy scarf that makes it totally out of place in all his his uh, attire. And as you enter the room and begin walking, the scarf like like wobbles in an unnatural way for what this looks like. It's it's a material retracts into a, a mass and changes its color back to like it's purplish pinkish, and that's when like the Sheeran like looks at you and like notices and grabs his hands like like offers it like thank you uh this it was nice uh, a company here in, in in the bridge how how was the trip it was good thank you for looking after twisty for me if we have to go on more excursions like that may i leave him with you again uh Sure, sure, yeah, yeah, it could be good. Yeah, yeah, you can stay here. The, the bridge is safe. Thank you. And I will take Twisty and quietly go back to my room. And as you're making your way back to your room across all the hallways of this uh, somewhat home that you guys have been making in the past days, that's where we're going to finish tonight's episode. Hey. It's hard to plan fights when I do not consider into account my shitty ass rolling. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Dude, dude. That is part of being a DM, mm -hmm. okay? Well, sometimes that is part of players, being me. No, no, no. Sometimes your players do really, really good, and you do garbage. And sometimes you do really, really good, and your players do garbage. So you try to fudge some rolls so you don't feel so bad for TPKing them, but you still end up TPKing them. It'll be fine. Kill me, Sakurin. I'm prepared. All right. By the way, oh, everybody, I, I, thank you Sakurin. for... Uh, joining us for tonight's homework game. Um, in terms of activities for the Nerds uh the NA by night is right now on a bit of a, a pause as we are having some uh, activities going on for some of our members in, in their Halloween uh, festivities. And uh, soon we'll have the other festivities coming in for December. So we're having a, a, a pause until January, if I recall correctly. And uh, for the moment, we have no other shows. So for Homeware, we'll be returning in two weeks on October something. No, uh, November. In the... It'll be November. November yeah, yeah, yeah. 3rd? No. no it will November be 10. 10th. Ah, November I was off 10th. a week. Yeah. Uh, mm. November 10th. And... Uh... Don't bully Sekarin. <laughs> it's my job. <laughs> It's her life goal. It's my apparently. job to tease. I'm only Zachary. allowed to do it one episode, once an episode. Um, and that was with the water earlier. I'll eventually I'll, I'll, I'll take it on you guys and your characters. Don't worry. Okay. This will happen. It'll be fine. Um, I expected fine. it at this point. And um, if you want to catch up with any of our shows or any other of past episodes from Homeward, uh, you can check in our YouTube. Uh, you can visit us in our social medias, in Facebook, in Twitter, in Instagram. And we have some a TikTok also running uh, around there. And the place that you can totally uh, hang along with us is on our Discord, where we talk about different things from memes, from video games, from RPGs, and of course, the shows, different theories and ideas and weird things that we talk about. Maybe you learn more about books with us. Hey. <laughs> and um, I think we passed, I passed the baton to Faith. Yes. Hi, 
Hi, I'm Faye. If you like what I did here tonight and you want to see more of what I can do for you, uh, I run my own uh, TTRPG site, uh, well, not site, uh, hangout server. community space uh, server. Yes, that's the word. Uh, that is Wild Witch RP. Uh, we are a TTRPG production company. You can check more out on Facebook and Twitter, where you can find us at uh the at sign Wild Witch RP or our website, uh, wildwitch.com, uh, W I L D E uh, W I T C H.com. Uh, it's a lot of fun that we've got over there. And of course, every other Thursday, you can find me here. Yeah. Uh, Ooh, I've got then. one thing, real quick, real oh. quick, just because it's important. And the next time we talk to each other, it'll be too late. If you're in the United States, get registered to vote. Uh, midterm elections are coming up yep. and they're important and the deadlines to register absentee are coming up so do that now i'm done <laughs> not voting is voting for the worst option so yeah <laughs> without further ado and with that uh thank you everybody for uh, joining us and we love you and uh stay nerdy stay nerdy